This is part one of my talk on models of the Renogram. The aims of this talk are first of all to describe how the kidney works in sufficient detail to explain what a Renogram curve represents, and I'll use several models to illustrate this. The second aim is to understand the relative merits of some of the radiopharmaceuticals that can be used for renography because of the different ways that they're all handled by the kidneys. So in the first part of this talk I'm going to explain what the renogram is and talk about the kidney, its anatomical structure, the functions of the nephrons from which it's made and show my black box kidney model. In the second part I'll go on to describe some models of the renogram, a, a simple kidney model, a compartmental model and then my poo sticks model. And in the third part I'll talk about the radiopharmaceuticals used for renography and explain how a nephron model can explain how the kidneys handle each radiopharmaceutical. So first of all, what is a renogram? Well, it's simply a diagnostic nuclear medicine procedure that we use to investigate kidney function. To perform a renogram, the patient is positioned in front of a gamma camera. They may be seated or lying down, depending on the facilities of the gamma camera used. And the aim is to get a posterior view of the kidneys. We then inject a suitable radiopharmaceutical. Uh, a radiopharmaceutical is a chemical with a radioactive label. And for the renogram, we use a radioactive tracer that's excreted in the urine, so we can see it passing through the kidneys. Then we acquire a dynamic study, typically one image with the gamma camera every 20 seconds for about 30 minutes. And then we analyse the images acquired using a computer to produce curves showing how the radioactivity, the amount of radiopharmaceutical in each kidney changes with time. Those curves are called the renogram curves and they demonstrate kidney function, both uptake by the kidneys and elimination into the bladder. So this is what a normal renogram might look like. At the top we've got some representative images from the study showing what the gamma camera sees. Here we have a posterior view of the patient and the amount of blackness in the image shows the amount of radioactivity detected which is the amount of radiopharmaceutical and so we can see the kidneys quite clearly early on and the bladder at the end. In fact, if we look at the first image representing five minutes of the study, we can see that there's plenty of activity in the left kidney and the right kidney, and in fact, equal amounts in each representing equal function. So if we draw a region of interest here in blue around the left kidney, red around the right kidney, and green around the bladder, we can get the computer to tell us how the activity changes with time. And because we've got one image every 20 seconds, we can show minute by minute how the activity in each region of interest changes with time. At the bottom we've got the uh, curves, the blue curve for the left kidney, the red curve from the right kidney, and you can see these renogram curves rise equally during the first few minutes, representing equal uptake by the two kidneys. In fact, the computer calculates that the left kidney is slightly better than the right, having 52% of the patient's total kidney function, whereas the right kidney has 48%. So essentially, both kidneys have equal uptake. Both of the renogram curves reach a peak at about 4 minutes, and thereafter the activity declines, and it moves on into the bladder. So we can see that in this case, both kidneys empty uh, quickly. And you can see also on the 20 minute image here that the kidneys have hardly any activity left and is all in the bladder. So here is a result for an abnormal study. Looking at the images, we can see a five minute image. In this case, there's a lot more activity in the left kidney than there is in the right. And that's confirmed by the curves. The blue curve for the left kidney rises normally but the red curve for the right kidney rises only slowly in comparison. And the computer calculates that the left kidney has 80% of the patient's total renal function, with the right ki kidney contributing only 20%. Moreover, although the left kidney reaches a peak at 4 minutes and uh, there thereafter empties, the right kidney um, doesn't empty at all. It keeps on going up and up and up, indicating that activity is accumulating in the right kidney without passing on into the bladder. We can also see that in the images, 
if we look at the 35 minute image we see that although the left kidney has emptied there's quite a lot left in the right kidney. So the right kidney not only has worse uptake than the left kidney but it also fails to empty, it's obstructed. So what about the anatomy of the kidney itself? Well the outer part of the kidney we refer to as the, the cortex and just inside that the middle bit is the medulla. The nephrons of which the kidney is made lie within the cortex and medulla and this part of the kidney is often referred to as the parenchyma, the functioning tissues of the kidney. The urine that is formed um, passes through the calyces and the renal pelvis before passing out down the ureter and that uh, the calyces and pelvis together are called the collecting system. So when blood comes in through the renal artery it will go out through the distribution arteries to the outer part of the, the cortex where it is filtered and the waste materials pass out through the urine uh, in the ureter whereas the filtered clean blood passes out again through the renal vein. If we look in a little more detail at the nephrons of which the kidney is made, there's about a million individual nephrons in each kidney. Uh, we're just showing a couple of them here. The blood comes in through the arterial system and reaches the glomerulus, which is the start of the nephron. That's essentially a semi-permeable membrane which lets small molecules through into the filtrate, which then passes down through the tubules. Meanwhile, the filtered blood passes out again through the venous system. And if we look in the cortex, we'll see that the glomeruli of all the nephrons lie within the cortex. So the filtrate starts here and then passes down through the tubules, which are long, thin tubes that di dive down into the medulla and back out again to the cortex. As the filtrate passes through the tubules, other molecules that the body wishes to excrete are um, moved from the blood into the filtrate by a process of tubular secretion and others that the body wants to retain are uh, absorbed back again by tubular absorption. That process forms the urine which passes out of the uh, tubules um, into the collecting ducts where the tubules from lots of nephrons all join together like an ever-growing river system where it passes out in the urine. So we can describe how the kidney works by my favorite model which is a black box model. Um, for a black box you only need inputs and outputs and don't need to know what goes on inside. In the case of the kidney we have one input, the renal artery where the dirty blood comes in and two outputs. The renal vein where the clean blood comes out and the ureter where the urine comes out. So here's a video demonstrating my black box model. This is my model that goes straight how the kidneys work. I call it my black box model because obviously it is a black box but also because physicists like to talk about a black box model as a system with inputs and outputs, but where you don't need to understand the details of what goes on inside. Obviously, one of the purposes of the kidney is to remove waste materials from the blood. And in that respect, we have an input representing uh, the renal artery where dirty blood uh, comes in, and two outputs. We've got the renal vein where clean blood comes out, and the ureter, where urine containing waste materials uh, comes out. To illustrate that, I'm going to uh, use this mixture of molecules to represent blood. We've got small white molecules uh, representing water, which is a large constituent of blood. We've got large molecules for red blood cells and white blood cells. And then we've got some fairly large protein molecules and the small orange ones represent waste material um, that the body is going to remove. So if we take some of this uh, dirty blood mixture and uh, put it into the renal artery, we see that after a very short delay, it comes out through the renal vein as clean blood without the waste products. But after uh, quite a long delay, um, it eventually um, has all the waste material come out down the, the ureter. So from the dirty blood, we have separated out the clean blood without the waste material and the urine which contains the waste material plus lots of water. So that's essentially how the kidney works. Obviously for 
a black box, we don't need to know the details of uh, what goes on inside, but if you promise not to tell anyone else, um, we have a look inside, we see actually, in here there is a filter containing holes which let through smaller molecules, and we have the holes which can be used to extract certain molecules uh, that we want to get rid of. Actually, that's true of the real kidney itself. We have the glomerulus and we have tubular secretion and tubular reabsorption. So that's a model of how the kidney works. That's the end of the first part of this talk. In part two, I'll look at some models of the renogram.